What's up, y'all gang? So we got the statics problem here today. So we got this crazy system going on, and our goal is to find the reactions that supports A and B. So let's go ahead and get started. So I went ahead and drew this picture here. It's basically what you're given. But then also, uh, we need to go ahead and finish this as this our force body diagram. So we have reactions at A and B. So let's figure out what's going on there. So A is a fixed support in a wall. So if you have a fixed support in a wall, you're gonna have three unknowns. You're gonna have uh, force x, so this is gonna be a of x. You're gonna have a force in the y direction, so this is gonna be a of y. And then you're gonna have a moment too. So let's go ahead and draw the moment positive, so let's have it going this way. So this is gonna be moment to a. So those are three unknowns at a, so then we need to figure out what's happening at b. So b has two unknowns, because uh, it's, a, it's a pin. So a pin has, some of the, or has a force in the y direction, so let's label this b of y. And a force in the x direction, b of x. So I went ahead and drew them just facing right, positive, uh, but we might figure out later that that's wrong. So now what we want to do is, if we go ahead, we have five unknowns. We can't figure out five unknowns because we only have three equations in this two-dimension space. So what we need to do is we need to break the system up into smaller systems. So what I would recommend is let's break it up into system DB. Let's just take this part and figure out what's going on here. And that's the way I'm going to do it, but I'm sure you could do it AC. Um, but let's go ahead and do db because I think that's going to be the easiest. So let's redraw what's happening at db. So we're going to have, you know, this is b, this is d. We have b of y, b of x, and then we have this distributed load. So let's go ahead and simplify this distributed load. So it's a triangle, so we want to simplify this to one force. So the triangle, if this is 9 meters long, it's going to act a third of the way down from the top of the triangle. So it's going to be here, we're going to have to go a third of the way down, and that's where the center is going to act at. So if it's nine feet long, it's going to act at, um, it's going to act at three feet. So we can go ahead and label this, and this is three feet, this is then six feet. So how much force is that going to be? Well, we're going to take the area of the triangle, right? So 700 times nine, and then divide that by two. So if you do that, you get 3,150. Nice. So then there's one force left, and that's going to be whatever this force CD is exerting, right? This, this uh, bar here is holding up our thing, so it's going to act kind of like at an angle here. It's pushing it up. So we know the dimensions of this triangle, right? It's 8 feet long by 6 feet tall. So then you can do Pythagoras' theorem here to get that the, the, the hypotenuse is 10, which simplifies basically to a 4-5 or three, four, five triangle, right? This is a four, this is three, and this is five. All right, so let's label this uh, force CD because it's pin CD, so that's the easiest way to do this. So now we have this here, and it, we can actually just go ahead and um, take the moment around somewhere, and then well, let's take the moment around D, right? If we take the moment around D, then this force that's unknown is not in the system, and we only have this one unknown B of Y in the equation. So some of the forces, or some of the moments around D is equal to zero because we're at equilibrium. So let's go ahead and do it. So we have this 3,000 uh, pound force pushing us clockwise. So we're going to have to subtract that negative 3,550. And its distance away is three feet, uh, not 34 feet, three. And then B of Y is pushing us up. So it's going to add B of Y times its distance, which is nine feet. And b of x is pushing away, so it's not going to do anything to the moment. So then with this equation, all we have to do is move b over to the other side and divide by 9. And you're going to get that b of y is equal to 1,050 pounds. Perfect. So then there's a couple ways we could find b of x, but what I'm going to do is let's figure out what force cd is equal to. So to find what force cd equal to, let's do some of the forces in the y direction. You know it's equal to 0, so we're equilibrium. So it's going to be plus force CD because it's pushing up. And then its ratio of vertical to hypotenuse is 3 to 5. So we're going to multiply it by 3 bits to get just what's happening in the vertical direction. Then we need to subtract that 3,150 and then add B of Y. So we know B of Y is 1,050. So then we're going to move force CD to the other side, figure that out. We're going to find that force CD is equal to 3,500 pounds. So this isn't something we need for this, but it's going to help us later, and it's going to help us right now. So we have five thirds, two, two, two. Okay. So then all we have to do now is some of the forces in the x direction. We know it's equal to zero, so we have force CD. 
pushing four fifths in the x direction this time, because it's four on the x to five on the hypotenuse, and then it's just plus b of x. So move b of x to the other side, plug in four cd, you get b of x, and you're gonna get a negative number here, you're gonna get b of x is equal to 2,800 pounds, but you're gonna find that it's a negative number, so that means that we drew our force body diagram wrong. Here we drew b of x going to the right, but we're gonna find that b of x is actually going to the left. So let's just put up left here, just so we know. Okay, perfect, so we figured out everything happening in B, so now we just need to figure out what's happening in A. So, I think we can go ahead and get rid of this drawing. We don't need it anymore. So now what we can do is we can go down to A and figure it out there, or let's just take the whole system, right? Let's just figure it out, because we have now three unknowns left. But the whole system, we can do that. So looking at our whole force body diagram, let's just do, let's start with some of the forces in the Y direction. You know, it's equal to zero, so that equilibrium. So we got A of Y pushing up, and then minus this distributed double triangle load. So we know it's two triangles, so it's just gonna be half of its area. So it's 12 feet long, and then its peak is 500. So it's gonna be 12 times 500 divided by two. So we can label that 12 times 500 divided by two. And then subtracting that, of course. So then we also have this triangle load. We figured out it was, um, what do we say it was, 3,050? So we can just subtract 3,150 or you know whatever the area of that is, and then add B of Y. And we know what B of Y is there. So solve for A of Y just by moving it to the other side. We get A of Y is equal to 5,100 pounds. Cool. And some of the forces in the X direction. This one's way easier. Right, we have a of x, and then minus b of x. So b of x, we know is pointing to the left, so we're gonna have to subtract b of x. And we know it's equal to zero, so we're at equilibrium. So then a of x is gonna be the same as b of x, which is 2,800 pounds. And we know that one's pushing to the right. Cool, so then all we have left is to find the moment around a. So to do the moment around a, let's just do another, uh, let's break it up into parts again. It's gonna be a little easier if we just take this segment at the bottom and simplify it. Uh, this marker is dead, but it's okay. All right, so this is A, this is C. So we're taking the moment around A, so it looks like that. I'm not even gonna draw A of Y and A of X, because we know when we take the moment around A, it's gonna be equal to zero for that. So this is gonna act in the center, right? It's gonna be six feet over. Pretty easy to tell that. And we know that it's uh, total distributed. It's gonna be 500 times 12 divided by two. I should have probably done the math on this. But yeah, 500 times 12 divided by two is the total area of this, and that's equal to 3,000 pounds. So we know that that's x six feet. Six feet, and then there's another six feet here. And then we have this force CD, right? Like, like last time, it was pushing up this way, so it's gonna push down this way. So we know it's gonna push down like that. And this is force CD. We again know that it's gonna be a four, three, five triangle. And then now we have this. So if we want to find moment at A, let's just take the sum of the moments at A. So sum of the moments at A is equal to zero, right? So we have this 300 or 3,000 pounds pushing down. It's going to make us want to rotate clockwise. We're going to have to subtract 3,000 times its distance, which is six feet. And then, um, so this next one for CD. So we just want to, we're just concerned with the Y because the X is going to push us into itself and it's not gonna have any moment. So just with the y, so we're gonna have to subtract it too because it's making us wanna rotate clockwise. So minus four CD, and then it's gonna be three over five for the vertical component. And then what's its distance is 12 feet total. And then we also need to consider this moment at A, right? This is what we're solving for, so let's just add moment at A, plus moment at A. So this is our equation here, so all you have to do is move moment of A over and plug in for CD, which we have already, and you get that moment at A is equal to 43,200 pound feet. And it's going, and we're gonna get a positive number, so our assumption that it goes counterclockwise is correct. So there we go. So there you go, so we figured it all out nice. So it only took me 10 minutes. That's not too bad. So yeah, this is a pretty tricky question. This is probably like as hard as it gets in terms of the book that I'm using. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, check out my uh, channel. I have a whole like uh, 
playlist on this kind of stuff and uh, ask any questions in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.